Why is Puerto Rican Spanish so hard to understand? Today we're going to talk about the Puerto Rican Spanish, why it is considered to be very difficult for most Spanish learners, and the things you should pay attention to when trying to learn it. Empecemos. Hola amigos, Jim and Mai here from Spanish and Go, your resource for learning real-world travel Spanish. And today, we're going to talk about why Puerto Rican Spanish is so difficult, and uh, more so why it was difficult for us when we first got here, because there's some major differences between here and lots of other different forms of Spanish. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, but we're going to help you out, because I wish I knew these things when we first got here. So Puerto Rican Spanish. This is the most popular variation of Caribbean Spanish there is. Many people say that Puerto Rican Spanish resembles the Andalusian Spanish, and that is actually true. A lot of people immigrated from Andalusia to the island of Puerto Rico between the 15th and the 18th century, and that influenced the way Puerto Rican speak Spanish until now. And other people think that it sounds a little bit more like Canarian Spanish because a lot of people came from that region of Spain in the early 19th century. And also Puerto Rican Spanish has a big influence from African dialects and of course the Taino language which was already being spoken here on the island before the Spanish arrived. So now let's get into some specific examples of what makes Puerto Rican Spanish different from maybe the other types of Spanish you've heard or learned before. And one of the first things we noticed when we moved to Puerto Rico was that sometimes the D disappears. Eso es lo que dice él. That's what he says. Damn it. This is most obvious in words that end in ado, ido, and edo. For example, one time I went to La Frutera, which is a smoothie place here on the island, and I ordered a smoothie, and they asked me if I wanted coco rayao. Coco rayao. That really threw me off. I didn't know what they were talking about. It didn't register to me that they are talking about coco rayado. Another very common aspect of Puerto Rican Spanish is the elimination or aspiration of the letter S. So for example, if you go to a restaurant, this happened to us many times, so if you're drinking water, they might ask you if you want ma-agua instead of mas-agua. So the S sounds more like a... Um, a breath. Yeah, yeah, so they say ma or do instead of dos mm -hmm. and little things like that. And so that's very common and if you're not prepared for that, that can throw you off completely because you're not expecting for the S's to disappear, just like the, uh, the D's. Another thing that might catch you off guard with Puerto Rican Spanish is changing R's to L's. And this usually happens partway through the word that the, that's being said. For example, anytime you hear anyone talk about Burger King, it's Belgel King. But you also hear it in other words like amor. They'd say amor, mi amor, or carne instead of carne. But they only change the R to an L when it's a soft R. So if the R starts at the beginning of the word, it's not the case. So you'll hear it in Puerto Rico. So you notice the soft R in the word Puerto is changed to an L, but the R in Rico is not. Which leads us to our next aspect of why Puerto Rican Spanish is a little difficult or tricky. Sometimes the trilled R's are pronounced like J's. So for example, instead of saying Puerto Rico, they sometimes say Puerto Rico. So the R sometimes changes to like a J sound. For example, instead of Rojo, they say Rojo, which is the name of the area we're in right now, Cabo Rojo. We've heard people say Cabo Rojo so many times. And we've also heard people say Carro instead of carro. 
Yeah, it kind of sounds like a French R to me. I don't know French, but that's the way I kind of hear it. It sounds like some sort of French influence into words with Rs. And it makes sense because there was also a big migration of French people who settled in the center of the island. Uh, we actually met someone not too long ago with a very French sounding last name. And he was like, yeah, my relatives came from France and like, I don't know French, but that's my last name. <laughs> I can't even remember the last name. It was hard. That's what she said. Another thing here in Puerto Rico that takes a little getting used to with the language is that a lot of the names of the cities here are actually originally Taino names. And a lot of words from the Taino language has actually made their way into general Spanish. Like the words huracán, guayaba, iguana, hamaca, and many more. I had no idea. And as we also mentioned before, the African dialects also had a big influence in Puerto Rican Spanish, and they adopted words like guineo, which is a banana. Guineo, it's a word that comes from the African dialects spoken here when they brought um, slaves, um, when the Spanish arrived. Also words like ñame, which is like a sweet potato, but a yam. Yeah, ñame. And just like it happened with the Taino words that made their way to the general Spanish, this also happened with the African words like mambo or conga and marimba, just to name a few. Another interesting challenge in Puerto Rican Spanish is they often use the subject pronouns in questions. For example, que tu quiere is like que quieres. Let's say que tu quieres. Usually in Spanish, the tu is encompassed in the quieres, so it's just implied. But here they'll kind of add the tu for emphasis or something. Another example would be que tu hace. It's like the breath again. But uh, you could usually just say que haces, what are you doing? But again, they're adding the tu. And before we continue, don't forget to like and subscribe for more travel and Spanish tips. Now, the next reason why Puerto Rican Spanish could be a little bit difficult for you to understand is because we can't deny that the U.S. American English has made its way to the Puerto Rican Spanish. Many years ago, when Spanish ceded Puerto Rico to the U.S., the U.S. tried to impose the English language here on the island, but since Puerto Ricans never truly adopted the English language, they did take some words that they now use on their day-to-day -day lives. Like, for example, we hear a lot of people talk about the weekend instead of el fin de semana. They also say things like, hay que janguear, or estamos ready. What else? Está full. Yeah, something is lleno. They say full. And estoy pompeado. Like I'm pumped instead of estoy emocionado. O te llamo pa atrás. Uh -huh. Te llamo pa atrás. Without the S. <laughs> so the Puerto Rican Spanish accent is without a doubt a reflection of the cultural richness on the island. We don't want you to think for a second that we're making fun of the accent here. We think it's really interesting and actually a big focus for us on this channel is to talk about some differences in the Spanish around the world. So if you're interested in visiting Puerto Rico, we hope you find this video useful because these are things we wish we had known before we moved here. And if there's any other thing that you want to share with us on why the Puerto Rican accent is so different or so difficult as some people want to say, uh, let us know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more travel and Spanish tips. And remember, el camino es el destino. The journey is the destination. Nos vemos pronto. Adios.